This time on The Axe Files, we look at a series I promised some time ago, and one that's surprisingly popular and has been asked for a lot. Ryuhei Tamura's Oceanic Adventure, Hard Boiled Cop and Dolphin. Full name, Shakunetsu no Nirai Kanai, or Hard Boiled Cop and Dolphin. Start date, June 27th, 2020. End date, June 21st, 2021. Total chapters, 47, compiled into five volumes. Ryuhei Tamura would begin his public manga career by working as an assistant under Toshiaki Yoshiro on Siren and producing one-shots in the 2000, with his big splash coming when his entry to Shonen Jump's fourth Golden Future Cup, Beelzebub, would be selected as the winner. The Golden Future Cup, for those unaware, is usually a yearly competition that sees a few one-shots run in the magazine back-to-back, -back, with the winning one gaining the right to become a series. I have a whole video on it if you want to know more. But what's important here is Tamura won and also managed to sideline its curse, going on to serialize Beelzebub in 2009 to great success. After this, the one-shot Tiger Dragon Brothers would come out in 2015 following Beelzebub's ending, featuring two brothers who climb to the top of a mountain to gain secret martial arts techniques. This turns one of them into a girl and another into a dragon. Elements of this would crop up in later works, with the dragon brother being similar to a character in Hardboiled Cop and Dolphin, and the gender swapping reflecting Tamura's next work in Shonen Jump, Hungry Marie. Hungry Marie is similarly a battle comedy series and one we might cover one day, as the premise is batshit insane, involving a boy who gets possessed by the ghost of Mary Antoinette's daughter. Surprisingly, it lasted four volumes, and after the one-shot Rapa Rendan. In 2019, Hard Boiled Cop and Dolphin would finally begin in the summer of 2020. Hard Boiled Cop and Dolphin begins with Boil Samajima, a rugged cop who patrols the streets of Shinjuku whose methods are more than a little outdated and overly violent, leading to his erupt but funny firing. He is sent to the Ogasawara Islands, which are directly south from mainland Japan, and there we get introduced to Umi Nanase, a walking source of boob jokes and some interesting background on a group called the Cult of the Sea, as well as a girl who is raised by a dolphin. Here we get the contrast of a pretty shady cult story brewing, with the absolute hilarity of Samajima's new partner being revealed to be an actual dolphin man. The absurdist humour on display by Orpheus's mere existence is great, but he quickly establishes himself as a very fun character, bouncing off of Samajima really well with them developing a buddy cop style rivalry partnership. The setting is also well fleshed out by its backgrounds, choice of character design and clothing, as well as the art in general. Tamura manages to capture the warm tropical climate of the Ogasawara Islands really well in my opinion, that not only add to the manga's strong sense of quality, but it also helps differentiate itself from a lot of other manga through its setting. It was definitely one of my favourite aspects when I initially started reading the series. While predominantly hardboiled cop and dolphin focuses on its comedic aspects, at the beginning, it does gradually and consistently set up its story, with Chaco, the oracle girl rescued from the cult, being central to the plot, it being revealed that she's the cause of a lot of these mysterious ocean people to appear, like the star punk in chapter 4. Due to her powers, she isn't just desirable to the cult, but also various ocean gangs who the duo must deal with throughout the story, which allows the work to engage in battle shonen fights with all sorts of quirky oceanic characters. And then these are balanced out with some nice slice of life chapters until about a few volumes in, where more characters are introduced like the main villain Kamuro, and the cult begins to make their move. While I do like these developments, I do find them and what goes on in these chapters a bit overly complicated, since it's it introduces so much so quickly, and it then jumps back to Gag of the Week chapters for a while. But I often found the clash in tone distracting. The manga doesn't help itself either when it further introduces a whole new cast of characters in Section 7, who help our cop duo infiltrate some undersea ruins, looking for a relic called the Poseidracon, but they aren't the only group looking for it. We then get a series of undersea battles, as well as on land where Umi and the Osawara family, some previous antagonists turned good, fight off some threats who aim to kidnap Chako. Sadly, they are outmatched and Chako is taken into the ocean, where she suddenly grows up because she's been possessed. Possessed Chako then reunites with the rest of the cast undersea, and a big door opens, revealing a very large hand, which is one of the Poseidracons. 
I find this whole section of the plot very confusing with the amount that's going on, as it's juggling around 20 characters, explaining a new battle system, as well as hinting at lore and plot events. It's all just too much at this stage. Camera fights Orpheus in front of the Big Hand, whose real name is revealed to be Hyberu, who was once human and a friend of Camero's, and then we get their backstory. Seven years ago, the two were sent to investigate the Cult of the Sea. This is where they met Yae Kushinda, who is part of the cult's inner circle, and gradually they all fall deeper and deeper into the cult, which gets genuinely disturbing at times with their rituals. The trio attempt to escape, which prompts even more messed up stuff to happen, which involves Hyberu chopping off his own hand and being imprisoned. Yae and Kamuro have a baby, which is Chako, and more disturbing stuff is revealed, with the cult leader keeping mermen to eat and distribute throughout the island's food source, which allows the eaters of it to breathe underwater. Camaro then kills the cult leader and takes over the cult, and in a twisted way he rejects his humanity and kicks off the events of the story, aiming to search out the relics of the Poseidrakon to essentially drown the world as payback for what humans have done, or at least I think that's what he's trying to do. All of the backstory between the two is tied up, but Orpheus can't beat Camaro, who in the end dies, with his hand being the only thing remaining of him. With the hand, Samajima comes in and finally beats Kamuro and arrests him. Despite the convoluted events that have led up to this point, the manga opts to go a more simpler route and focus on the characters and their thoughts surrounding Orpheus' death. And in the simplest terms, Chako has just lost her dad and some Majima has just lost his new partner, and it's pretty sad. The final chapter then sees us in the future, with Chako describing her three dads, Kamuro, Orpheus, and now Samajima. I like that the manga doesn't reverse what happened, it doesn't bring back Orpheus for a cheap happy ending, but lives with its consequences and has a bittersweet ending that caps things off really nicely and salvages the series a bit. As I've alluded to, Heartbold Cop and Dolphin got a lot right. It had great art, fun initial characters, a funny hook with Orpheus being a dolphin, and it also had a unique setting. Part of the reason I think it may have gotten axed though is its midpoint, where lots of things start to happen in too quick of a succession. There are just too many new characters, new events, fights, and new power system elements being added that are just not very clear. Maybe it's just me, but I found it all a bit hard to keep track of everything. Characters especially, since we already had some really fun and well-established ones, yet Tamura went ahead and throws in Section 7, which are fairly boring, they barely get fleshed out, and even the main female lead mostly just serves to pad out the mango. Pad out the mango? out the manga and throw exposition at us. These elements could have been removed or cleaned up in a way that would make the story flow better and be more fun to read in my opinion. Especially since we get the backstory which is one of the better parts of the manga, revealing that Orpheus knows most of this stuff anyway. Putting more focus on him, Chako and Samajima would have been better. Its jokes as well are another element I loved at the beginning, but found they didn't mesh well towards the end. It turns from a pretty sweet silly manga at the beginning into to a really somber emotional one at the end, which I think is fine, but there's a lack of tonal consistency throughout the whole thing. Something else to mention is the time period Cop and Dolphin began in, serializing a few months after the murder of George Floyd, and just a few weeks after a massive Japanese protest on July 14th. The world at large had, and still has, a very stern opinion of the police and the brutality they inflict, which could be the cause of some not wanting to read the series or to just enjoy it less, and it came out at the absolute worst time when discussion about these events and protests was very high. Just as important as the time of serialization, looking at the state of the magazine is also an important thing to bring up too, with Hardbolt Cop and Dolphin almost hitting its first year anniversary. It got very close to having another cover, which could have been a reason for it being axed at this point, instead of a bit later, as Jump may have wanted to save covers for other manga or events. The fact the fact that this lasted this long though is commendable and speaks to the odd place the magazine was in during 2020 when a lot of older series ended. It gave manga like 
Oddball Cop and Dolphin more time to actually tell their stories, where otherwise they usually get axed a bit earlier. Eventually though it did end, with it making way for the next wave of new jump manga, with ITLC and Nine Dragons Ball Parade ending alongside it. I'm not sure what could have ended here instead of it, possibly Magu-chan or High School Family, but I don't think it was necessarily the wrong call to end Hardboiled Cop and Dolphin over those two. Now let's see what everyone else thinks about it. For our YouTube poll, not many people seem to have a strong opinion or have even read the series, but from those who have, it's generally pretty positive with only 15% thinking its axing was justified. The comments reflect this being mostly very positive, wanting the series to last longer or appreciating it for what it was, as if it was a shorter series. Twitter similarly had half the people be indifferent or not read the manga, but 27% thought the axe was justified, which is a considerable boost. Comments reflect this with more critique mentioning its downfall when it came to switching to a more battle-focused story. On the Discord, a few people chimed in to say something. Kinocha mentions it takes a turn, which I assume is when all the battles start and gets boring, although they did like the ending, and I can understand this as the ending section is pretty well done and has been praised by a few people. Matamobile gave a critique which I very much align with, stating that it throws too much at you too fast, leading to clashing tones, which I definitely felt this time while rereading. And of course we have a comment by Cactus who comes in here with the Tatsugeki. After the end of Hardboiled Cop and Dolphin, Tomura would publish Sebeku-chan wa Kamitsu Kitai in Study Jump, which is an educational manga that seems to be focused around Egyptian history and archaeology, I think, having a waifuified version of the Egyptian god Sebek. This obviously being a smaller project, Tomura would also go on to start a new manga in Sunday Gene X called Cosmos, a sci-fi drama featuring a boy who can tell if others are lying by their smell, who is thrust into a world of insurance investigation and aliens. It's also a really well illustrated and fun work based on the few chapters I've read and is currently being fan translated, so if you do want to check it out you can. And that was Rihue Tamura's Hardbolt Cop and Dolphin, a manga that although rough at points, managed to tell a pretty compelling story with an interesting setting and characters. Let me know your thoughts on Hardbolt Cop and Dolphin, as well as other series you might want to see me cover on the X-Files in the comments down below. While you're here, also consider checking out the other Shonen Jump videos on my channel. I have a few more X-Files videos like this, as well as a playlist going over the history of Shonen Jump. Don't forget to subscribe if you you'd like to see more like this, and check out the Discord, the link will be in the description if you'd like to join me and others for monthly axed manga read-alongs. As always, thank you so much for watching, remember to be kind, and take care.